So today we are going to discuss the mysterious extension of Rashad Bateman. My reaction to day one and day two of the Baltimore Ravens 2024 draft so far. And lastly, a cryptic tweet that may shed some light on the Baltimore Ravens plans. All this coming up now. All right, so it is here. The NFL draft is upon us. The Baltimore Ravens roster is beginning to take shape. But before we talk about what has happened Thursday and Friday, we're going to discuss the mysterious Rashad Bateman extension. Some reports have come out to say Rashad extended for three years, $15 million, which equates to $5 million a year. Whether this is true or not, it has not yet been confirmed. But for me, I didn't need to confirm it. As soon as I heard the news that Rashad Bateman had been extended, I already knew. If you pay attention to what the Baltimore Ravens do, you can tell that this was all a smokescreen, especially with the timing of it all, right before the draft started. They extended Rashad Bateman just because they knew, regardless of how the board fell, they were going defender in the first round. And this would kind of soften the blow for Ravens Flock. And people would say, hey, hey, we didn't need to get an offensive player. We just extended Rashad Bateman. This is an excuse that's being brandished around now about why the Ravens have not picked up a receiver because they have extended Rashad Bateman for a few years. But to me, it's just, I'm, it's, something's not sitting right. Something just does not sit well with my soul. Rashad Bateman was in line to have his fifth year option picked up for a cool $14 million. Not to say that the Ravens were actually going to pick this extension up, but it was was worth $14 million. His three-year extension he signed was reportedly or rumored to be $15 million in total. So you're telling me he had the potential to make that in one year and he turned that down to get a third of that. Now, I do understand players make decisions because they want stability. They want to make sure that their income is coming in because they are taking care of their families and they have a lot of things going on. But I guarantee you, even at Rashad Bateman's worst season, if he left the Baltimore Ravens after 2024, I guarantee you there would be a team that would sign him to at least a four, five million dollar contract. And that is at his absolute worst. So this is really befuddling to me why this happened. I understand on the Ravens aspect of it, they get a player that they drafted, a player that they want to keep, that they believe can be better than he has shown at a very cheap price. But for Rashad Bateman, I'm not understanding. But I do understand the smoke screen that was thrown out, the Morse code that was given, the untold signals of why the Ravens did this especially at this time, because if they were going to sign him to an extension, they could have done it at any time during the offseason. And to have it happen right before the draft, it's all planned. It's all strategic. Hey, touche, touche. It's worked so far. It has worked for all of these years. So why change what has been working? So with the Rashad Bateman news, that now leads me to the 2024 NFL draft that started on Thursday. And I know a lot of people in the flock are extremely happy that the Baltimore Ravens drafted Nate Wiggins out of Clemson as the team's first overall draft pick. And I get it. I truly understand. You're getting a top 15, top 20 talent at the end of the first round. You are attaining a quality pick at a bargain price. I understand it 100%. I can understand why people are really ecstatic. But for me, it's just same old, same old. It's blase, blase. I'm not moved by this pick. I'm not upset because I said they were going to pick Nate Wiggins. I said they were going to pick a defender, especially with the diversions that have been going on, all the articles, all the coach speak, all of the subliminal messages that have been put out through the press conferences and everything else. It was telling you that regardless of how this board fell, the Baltimore Ravens were going to take a defender. Now, for some people, they're going to say, listen, would you not rather take the second rated cornerback over the ninth, 10th rated offensive lineman? For me personally, I could not care less. Person. I want the individual that is going to best help this team win. I couldn't care less about rankings. I couldn't care less about placement because you have people drafted in the first round that don't work out every year. You have people drafted in the fifth or sixth round that turn out to be superstars. So you can miss me with that value stuff. But the thing to me that is most disturbing and the thing to me that upset me about what transpired with this is the excuses that are given. The excuses that are used as to why the Ravens took this pick, why this is a home run pick. This is for the future and I get it. It's for the future. You drafted him so next season if Brandon Stevens walks you got somebody to step in if you decide to cut Marlon Humphrey you got somebody to step in 
But the issue that I have with this is if either of those two players walk or whatever happens, next year we're going to go into the draft and the Ravens are going to go into the first round and get a cornerback once again. It's a rinse and repeat cycle. We use the same excuses over and over to do the same things over and over. We have two fourth round picks sitting on the bench. What were they for? Because everybody told me, oh my gosh, look at the value that we got in the fourth round. We got these two cornerbacks that are coming here and they're going to do amazing things. And it brings me back to the cycle of rinse and repeat. Everybody has their opinion. I get it. I understand. Everybody comes with different viewpoints, different things happen, different paths in life. But the thing that kills me is you say that, would you rather get this player versus that player? Get it. But it's funny how best player available only matters when it benefits the team. Because when the Ravens drafted Pat Queen, he damn sure was not the best player available. Regardless of what he became in this defense, Patrick Queen was not the best player available. Nobody said a word. Nobody said anything about, well, you know, he was the fourth rated linebacker, but we could have gotten so-and-so. No, because it was defense. It was okay. It was, we need to go after some projects every now and again. We need to go ahead and try to get some guys that are athletically raw and try to mold them. It's fine. Then we move on to Adafi Owe. Oh, he's raw. He's 6'5 with 4.3 speed. He's a project, but it's okay. Was Odafe Owe best player available or was he a need? Was Patrick Queen a need? Yes, he was. You let CJ Mosley go. Was Odafe Owe a need? Yes, he was. So it's only best player available when it fits the narrative, when it fits neatly into the script that you're writing. It's okay. But when it comes to offense, we can't ever go out here and say, you know what? Let's do a project. Let's try, let's, let's take a chance on this guy. He may not be best play available, but let's take a chance on him. Defensively, it's always acceptable to take chances because what's going to happen? We go out here and we draft a cornerback. Then what do we do in free agency? We go get a cornerback. We draft an edge in the draft. And what do we do in free agency? We go out here and get another edge. You see where I'm going with this? So we're going to go back next year. And regardless of what happens, we're going to say we need another cornerback. We're going to say we need another edge. Even though we have all of these picks. And I guarantee you, day three, we're going to go get a safety. Another safety. Because defense really matters to this organization. And I'm not mad because that's your philosophy. That's how you feel. But to me, it's not working. And the thing that upsets me the most is you have this MVP at quarterback. But yet and still, you give him the basic bare minimum. Say what you want, but look at the picks. Look at the veterans that they brought in. As good as Kevin Zeidler was, as good as Morgan Moses was, they brought in older, cheaper veterans to surround Lamar with. And did it work out? By all means it did. But yet and still, on the other side of the ball, we go younger, more expensive. And that's the only issue that a lot of us have, is treat the offense the same way that you treat the defense. There's a saying that we used to have in the military. We say this all the time. Good initiative, bad judgment. And that kind of equates to hate the player, not the game. And the Ravens, good initiative, bad judgment. Love Nate Wiggins. I think he's going to be an outstanding cornerback. But is he going to be what the Ravens need? Keep hearing these dime packages, these nickel packages. They're going to be crazy. And I could agree with you 100%. Packages are going to be insane. But stopping people has not been a problem for the Ravens the last six years. It's not been an issue. It's scoring points. And it's scoring points when it matters the most. So I don't hate the player. I don't like the pick. And then the Ravens move on to their second round pick, Roger Rosengard. Outstanding pick. Played left tackle. Played right tackle. Could be a replacement for Ronnie Stanley. Who knows? It's about time. It's about time they brought someone in that just in case Ronnie Stanley is not who he was and the Ravens don't want to keep him around. You can slide in his replacement instead of bringing in bargain basement backups. I really do like this pick. I really think that this pick helps Lamar out. And as of right now, he may be immediately the best option at right tackle for the Ravens. I know that there are a bunch of candidates that the Ravens have, but from what we've seen from them last season, we don't know. Hopefully during day three, early in day three, the Ravens go and draft a guard. Not unless they have a plan outside of the draft, because this is not the end all be all. Free agency is still going on. We still have the post June 1st cuts. I think the Ravens should bring in as much competition as possible. I know what the remaining picks that the Ravens have, Still going to get more defense. But why not bring in people that can protect and make plays for your quarterback? Like, this is the thing that I'm not understanding. And everybody's going to say, but they resigned Rashad Bateman. How's that work out so far? Not to say the fortunes can't change and things can be different. But how has that worked so far? Revisionist history. Let's just look at what has happened from history. And once again, that's not to say things cannot change because they probably will. Players get better, you get more cohesiveness, you get more chemistry, but it hasn't worked out. This formula that we've used has not worked out. So that takes me to pick three for the Baltimore Ravens. Adisa Isaac. It was a total surprise if you watched Coach Evans' stream last night or the LBHT stream. A lot of people upset with this pick. Me, I was a little bit numb. Knew what was going to happen. I knew that the Ravens were going to go defense two out of the first three picks at least. Even with all the offensive needs that we've had, they went out and brought in 
Odisa Isaac, edge from Penn State. And a lot of people have PTSD because of what has happened with Odave Owe. They're a little bit, you know, hesitant on Penn State defenders. But of course, people are going to say it's a need. It's a high need that we have. How is it a high need? We have a first round pick. We have a second round pick. We have a fourth round pick that the Ravens have drafted at edge. You brought back Kyle Van Oy. How is this an early need? That's four pass rushes right there. Four. And you drafted another. Where is he going to fit in in this rotation? That's not to mention the rest of the free agents that you may bring in. But I get it. I mean, you know, somebody said that DaCosta has kids that go to Penn State, so they draft Penn State players. But to me, how was that necessarily a need? How was not wide receiver a need? And of course, people are going to say, well, you know, there's still a bunch of wide receivers out there. And this is what we keep doing. We keep saying there's still a bunch of out there until that person gets drafted. Then it's like, well, we had to go in this direction because those people were gone. Of course, they're gone. We keep waiting and waiting to draft these players. I remember most of the publications, I, you can see the shift as it start off. What are the Ravens needs? Ravens need offensive line, wide receiver, cornerback, edge, running back. Like it was so many things. But then you just kept seeing the dynamic change and certain things started moving up and creeping down. And it's like, do the Ravens really need offensive linemen? Do they? Yeah, they do. Because we have a guy that has not played NFL football. We have a guy that has never been to an NFL mini camp. We have a guy who's never been to an NFL training camp, who's done dual practices, never done any of these things. And everybody's amped about him protecting Lamar Jackson. They're amped about this. This guy has never done anything in the NFL except for collect the paycheck. It's the only thing he's done in the NFL. And we're entrusting our quarterback to this. That's not to say that he can't be great. That's not to say that he won't be great. But why are we taking these chances? Look at the draft. The draft started with 14 selections on offense. The first 14 picks were on offense. Nine out of 32 picks went to defense. Why? Because this is an offensive league. The Ravens crave defenders that can stop the pass, but they don't crave offensive players that can cause disruption with the passing game. This is where I get confused. I need guys to stop wide receivers. I don't need wide receivers that other teams need to stop because Lamar can do it all. And we're not going to give him the protection that he needs so he doesn't have the time to do Lamar type thing. So I'm not giving him anybody to throw to. And I'm not giving him anybody to protect him on the level, should I say, that they do the defense to stop the people like Lamar Jets. And I think that's the only issue that we had. But speaking of wide receivers, the big thing on wide receiver news is Odell Beckham Jr. has been tweeting. Yes, he tweeted the salute when it comes to somebody saying about him making a possible comeback to the Ravens. Now, Odell Beckham Jr. has been a little bit quiet in the last few weeks as far as his destination is concerned. It was once thought that he was going to go to the Miami Dolphins and Tyreek Hill tweeted out, my man signed, sealed, delivered, it's done. But Odell tweeted out, oh yeah, I didn't know that because I don't recall signing with any team. So that brings back the possibility of Odell Beckham Jr. returning to the Baltimore Ravens. Me, that ship has sailed. The time has come. It's gone and passed. We don't need it. And I don't care how much the contract is for. Couldn't care. Don't need it. The Ravens have $7 million to play with right now with the salary cap currently. Don't need it. Don't need Odell with a bunch of void years. Don't need Odell on a three-year deal. I, I, listen, Odell is one of my favorite players, but it's time to move on, bro. It's time to keep it pushing. I don't need a superstar in name wide receiver that the team doesn't trust to play down the stretch. We don't need that. Bring in guys that we can depend on. Give Lamar that guy that can dominate a game. Give Lamar that receiver when something's going wrong. And know that I can get the ball to this gentleman. Give me a guy that when the game is on the line, he's going to get me a first down. He's going to get me a touchdown. I know I can throw the ball up to him and it's either going to go in his hands or it's going to hit the dirt. We need to get Lamar that guy and we need to protect him. That's not to say that the Ravens aren't going to end up doing this in the end. But as it currently looks right now, we are going down the same trajectory, going down the same path that we have always gone down. More and more defense, offense, you get by with what you got. I don't know, Fly. You let me know what feels different about this offseason than in the past. But I do thank you for hanging out with me. Once again, make sure to hit that like button to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to share with your friends. Appreciate you all for rocking with me thus far. So make sure to hit that notification bell to become aware when I come out with new videos. And until next time, and possibly after day three of the draft, it's your boy.